Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're reacting to Joel Embiid's finger injury. So yeah guys, I found this YouTube channel. It's called, um, so it's Brian Sutterer. Brian Sutter, he's in like a doctor who analyzes sports injuries. Very interesting, have seen some videos of him so far. And as you see, Shwell Embiid's finger looks disgusting. Very interested to see what the doc has to say about that. So let's go. It takes a lot to make me feel squeamish when it comes to sports injuries, but to be totally honest, what happened here with Joel Embiid's finger is pretty much as close as it gets. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, we're gonna be talking about something that even made my stomach turn a little bit when I saw it happen, specifically Joel Embiid's finger dislocation. The specific joint here that looks to be dislocated is what we call the MC. Guys, I thought one time that the same happened to me. I hurt my finger and I thought it would be like that, but it was all good, so <laughs> lucky me. Dislocated. The specific joint here that looks to be dislocated is what we call the MCP joint, which stands for the metacarpal phalangeal joint. The long bones that sit in the palm of our hand are called the metacarpals, and then the finger bones are the phalanges. So the metacarpal phalangeal joint is the joint between that metacarpal and the phalange. Interestingly here too, looking back at the play this happened, it was actually Embiid's own fault that he inadvertently caused his finger to dislocate like this. If we watch his right arm here during this play, it's kind of hooked around Steven Adams, and then as Adams moves his arm, Embiid's right hand kind of flings forward into his left hand and catches that finger, causing his finger to go backwards into what we would call hyperextension. So how can we classify MCP joint dis- Did it by himself? But even- Whatever, whatever he did that looked terrible, terrible. Locations and what's the relevant anatomy for what's going on here. The first way we can classify them is dorsal or volar. When we look at someone's hand, the dorsum of the hand is the backside of the hand. It's the dorsal aspect. The volar aspect is the front of the hand. That's your palm. So when we describe- Dorsal in or volar, ah. I know what you're saying, Doc. Uh, MCP dislocation. Uh, we describe it based on the position of the finger bone relative to the hand. A dorsal MCP dislocation is by far more common of the two. And in that case, the finger bone is basically up higher, dorsal or on the back side of the hand. And then a volar dislocation, which is much more rare, is the opposite direction. It's where that finger bone is now closer down on the palm side of the hand. Embiid's okay, looks to be a volar also, MCP dislocation. If you look closely, you can almost see a little bit of kind of a skin of divot or a hand. gap there on the back side of the hand that I suspect is from how his finger is kind of displaced into the palm of his hand. You can also tell here his finger is almost a little bit rotated and definitely got a Bruh, look at Oma. Um, guys, watch out. If you do sports or things with your hands, watch out guys. I hope that this never happens to you. An angle to it, implying there could be some additional injury to some of these ligaments in the joint. As I said, dorsal MCP dislocations are more common and they typically happen after a hyperextension type of injury, such as falling on an outstretched hand. Finger flexion is whenever we curl our fingers and make a fist and finger extension is when we straighten them back out. So finger hyperextension is going to be as we pull our fingers up even further. If we zoom in on the anatomy around the MCP joint, there's a number of key ligaments here providing the structural integrity. On the palmar side of the MCP okay, joint, we have something that, called the that. volar plate. This is a band of kind of ligamentous type soft tissue that helps prevent that hyperextension by basically putting a little support across that joint to prevent those fingers from hyperextending. On the back side of the MCP joint, we have a dorsal capsule, which is another kind of band of tissue to keep the joint in place. And then on either side of the joint, we have collateral ligaments, similar to the LCL and the MCL that you have in your knee. These provide that side to side stability in the MCP joint. And I think if we look back here at Embiid's injury. So I think at least two out of the three are bad hurt for Embiid, right? They, they, ha they 
they have to be right two out of the three have to be gone or yes be uh, be apart like you can tell how there is a bit of angulation there at his mcp joint to me implying that there could have been some damage to any of these collateral ligaments the other way we can classify these have dislocations to, is right? simple or complex a simple dislocation is what we saw here guys is it a simple or a complex dislocation i guess the complex one bro you can't tell me you can't tell me it's simple bro it has to be a complex that you're one able come on to that, reduce the joint back into that's place that's not happening reduce meaning get it back in proper alignment without needing any sort of surgery or open incision a complex mcp dislocation but guys, I forgot to mention, Joel Embiid got his finger back in place and played the whole game through. He played the whole game through. Location is the opposite. In that scenario, the different tissues that have been torn are actually sort of stuck inside the MCP joint to the point where you can't just take someone's finger and push it or move it back into the proper alignment and you oftentimes need surgery. For a dislocation like in beads, assuming that it was a volar MCP dislocation, they're basically gonna go back in the locker room and have his fingers down in a flexed position, so bent down. They're then gonna just apply pressure, trying to kind of push that MCP joint back out into alignment and push that phalange back out to get it to pop into place. Once you do this, you can then buddy tape the finger, meaning you use the stability that still is. They just push it back. That has to hurt so much. And do that, ugh, that bone noise. You know what I mean? It's in place in the joint next to it by taping those two fingers together. What you're doing in that situation is you're basically taking advantage of the ligaments that are intact in the good finger to support so you the gotta ligaments tape a healthy torn finger and the damage. To your hurt Thankfully though finger, these heal okay? up pretty quick. I don't expect this to be any sort of long-term concern for Embiid, except for maybe having a finger that perpetually could look like it's not in proper alignment. So guys, this has been the doc's video, very informative. Um, yeah guys, check him out. He always have some analysis on some basketball like sports injuries but uh, let's see well uh, the Sixers even won that game and Embiid, Embiid still finished with 32 minutes and nearly had the triple double are you crazy Embiid so guys thank you very much for watching destroy the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Guys, it is very, very appreciated. Subscribe so you won't miss my next video. See you in the next one, guys. Have a good day. Peace.